Mr. Secretary, you want to come on up? Yes, Governor, I'm on my way. All right. Kathleen, why don't you just step over here and we'll have the Secretary here. Well, good morning, everybody. We are here today to make the announcement of the newest senator that will be joining the unicameral for District 31, Kathleen Kauf. Kathleen is an active member of her community, and I will get more um, into her background so forth, so forth, but she is here with her husband, Andrew Fisher, and her son, uh, Brendan, who actually is a senior at the University of Nebraska. And we're gonna do the swearing in ceremony here, and then I'll come back and do a, another introduction of Kathleen, and then uh, we'll have open up to questions and answers. So that's how this will all play out. Oh, Senator Clements, I didn't see you there. Thank you very much for being here as well. We had Senator Clements and Senator Lowe. Uh, so we'll uh, do the swearing in ceremony first, then I'll talk a little bit about Kathleen's background. We'll let Kathleen talk a little bit about herself and then we'll open it up to questions and answers. So with that, Mr. Secretary, I'm gonna turn the podium over to you so that you can uh, do the swearing in. And the Secretary has a tight, time, tight timeline, so we're gonna let him uh, do uh, his officiating here. Thank you, thank you, Governor. As tight as the timeline is, it is a great honor and privilege to be able to administer the oath, uh, Kathleen, please. Raise your right hand. Do you, Kathleen Kauf, solemnly swear or affirm that you will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of Nebraska, and that you will faithfully discharge the duties of member of the Legislature District 31 according to the best of your ability, and that at the election at which you were or will be chosen to fill said office, you've not improperly uh, influenced in any way the vote of any elector, you've not accepted, nor will you accept or receive directly or indirectly any money or other valuable thing from any corporation, company, or person, or any promise of office for any official act or influence for any vote that you may give or withhold on any bill, resolution, or appropriation. If so, please say, I so swear. I so swear. Congratulations, Senator Kauf. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for your time. All right, Governor, thank you, Mr. Secretary. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right, well, now our newest officially sworn in senator, Kathleen Kauf, is someone who has been a part of our community uh, since her family moved here in 2012. We've got her husband and one of her sons, but she's got two other sons here as well. She is a graduate of University of Northern Iowa with a bachelor's degree in criminology and sociology with a master's in public policy. She also has a certificate of graduate or graduate certificate from UNO in gerontology. She's been an active member of the community, uh, especially around aging issues. She has uh, been a, a part of the Nebraska Aging Advisory Committee. She has uh, been on the board of the Nebraska Eastern Office of Aging's Foster Grandparent Advisory That's Board. Fantastic. Yeah, great. Uh, you've also had leadership positions in the Omaha Senior Resource Group, as well as uh, Millard Public Schools, and you've sat on the Omaha City Charter Commission. So that's a lot to do in 10 years, so yes. <laughs> you've been heavily involved in that. She also owns her own business, KT Beck Enterprises, which is a mediation and team coaching business. Uh, she and her husband uh, have been great members of our community and selected Omaha because of the great quality of life that we have here in Nebraska. Uh, I think you've been seven different places before yes, you came to Omaha. This is our seventh and final. Seventh and final place here as she has moved around, chose Omaha for the great quality of life, the great schools, just everything that we have to offer here in the state of Nebraska. And as she comes to the legislature, she is going to be looking to be able to continue to control spending so that we can continue to provide tax relief. She wants to make sure we have strong schools that support our students and also wants to make sure that we are cutting the red tape on small businesses that ultimately create most of the jobs here in our country. So Kathleen is a perfect fit for the representative to represent District 31, and she's gonna be doing a fantastic job of representing them until January 3rd, which is when this term will do, but she's also gonna be running for election here in November, and so uh, we'll seek to be able to continue to represent the folks of District 31 in 2023. So I'm excited to appoint Kathleen here today. And with that, Kathleen, would you like to say a few words? I'd love to, thank you. 
I would just like to say how deeply honored I am to be able to represent District 31. Um, I never really saw myself as a person who would run for office. My master's degree is public policy. I've always been interested in policy and interested in what goes on around it. Um, as we've seen, it takes people to actually get involved, to make change, to keep things going, um, and keep the wheels on the bus moving. So I'm thrilled to be able to serve as the senator for LD31. Um, I have one of my beautiful sons with me. He was the one who got uh, nominated to represent the brothers. I have an older son who has uh, graduated Iowa State about a year and a half ago, and he lives up in Rochester, Minnesota. And then I have a younger one who will be joining Brendan at Lincoln. He just graduated. So we're official empty nesters, and I thought politics, of course, will fill the void. Um, but uh, anyway, so it's, it's going to be exciting. It's busy. We have a lot to get done. I've been out knocking doors um, to run for this office. Um, with the unfortunate and untimely demise of Senator Pauls, I need to get 2,000 registered voters to sign a petition, basically giving me permission to run. Um, so I've been out meeting constituents, talking to people, and explaining the process. Uh, in many cases, I've run into people who were former students of Senator Pauls who had not heard he had passed. So I've had to break that news and share with them you know, how the process actually works. So it's been a very good way to meet the community. Um, there's a lot of shoe leather between now and November. So any questions? Oh, I'd actually, be... I want to jump back oh, here sure. again. So, Brendan, really? Like, do you want to be known as beautiful? He's beautiful. <laughs> He's my baby. Really? Because like when I was a college guy, I'm like, oh, that's something more right with choice. All right, great. So, uh, yeah, so uh, questions either for myself or for Kathleen. Yeah, Martha. Yes. Um, obviously, the first time the legislature may meet when you have a chance to be a part of it uh, would be the special session that we're anticipating is likely, mm -hmm. assuming the Supreme Court rules the way the leak, the draft opinion came out. What's your um, stand, stance on abortion? Would you have supported the bill that was uh, debated today? This, this past Most summer? recently. Yeah. So Martha's question is, uh, with the pending decision on uh, the Dobbs case in front of the Supreme Court, which may overturn Roe versus Wade, and the potential that we may call a special session to do more to protect preborn babies, uh, Kathleen, I'm repeating the question because that way the microphones pick yep. it up. Um, what is Kathleen? What is your stance on uh, life? Um, so I am pro-life, uh, and I thought that the bill that was recently presented was a very solid one. Um, and I will I look forward to being able to vote on something. We need to look at everything that comes forward. Um, depending on when the session is, we'll have, depending on how much time we have to evaluate it, I'm very pro-life. So this is, I consider it an honor to be able to vote on something. Um, and it is the state's responsibility to vote on these issues. This is something that should never have been a federal issue. Every state needs to decide this on their own, and it needs to be local. And so would you have voted for that bill if that would, if you had Yes. Okay. Other questions? Yeah, Paul. How many uh, candidates did you get? Did Kathleen apply? So Kathleen did apply. I believe we had Five apply, is that right? And I interviewed, interviewed four of the candidates, and there were some other candidates that uh, uh, we also talked to as well, and Kathleen was the person I chose. What uh, stood out uh, for you? Well, I think one of the things that really stands out for me with Kathleen is her active involvement in the community. I listed off some of her involvement, whether it was primarily around seniors, but also with the Omaha City Charter Commission. Uh, Kathleen has been actively involved in her community. One of the things I also liked was her experience. If you look at the, her educational background, not only the public policy, but the gerontology, obviously senior issues are some of the things that we deal with a lot here in the legislature. So I think that's important. And then I also liked her background with regard to her business. It's about mediation and coaching teams to success. And that is obviously part of what we do in the legislature. It's working together as a team to be able to deliver legislation. So I think all those things speak very highly of Kathleen and her experience. And how important was her position on abortion? So, uh, of course, I always look to, the question is how important was her position on abortion? I always look to appoint pro-life candidates because this is a pro-life state, so that obviously weighed uh, uh, very heavily in my decision with any of the candidates. Can you have one more question? Yeah, Martha. 
anticipate will be coming up in the spring is the, the bill that would have allowed people to carry concealed weapons without having to get a permit. What are your thoughts about that? So Martha's asking, what is um, uh, our new senator's position on, con or on the constitutional carry? Um, I spoke with quite a few of the police officers in Omaha, and I, I support constitutional carry. Um, I understood their, uh, the amendment that was pressed. I think there is a happy medium somewhere where we respect what law enforcement officers are telling us about their specific location and how much that will impact them. Um, but again, if it's in the Constitution, that is the highest law of the land, and I, I see them behind constitutional carry. So you would have voted for that bill? Yes. All right. Can we make Great. Sure, that would be sure. good. That would be good. Yes, Kathleen. Actually, you know, do you have us? Uh, we have a press release that'll have it. With a K. Kathleen with a K too. And your son's name, the other son. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll give that. In the we'll, bio. We'll, yeah, we'll get we'll get it out in the bio. Okay. Yeah, we'll, we'll just follow up. We'll, we'll, we'll follow up and get it out to you right away. Yeah. All right. Great. Thank you very much, folks. Appreciate it. Have a good one.